But I think the Fed is looking at the fact that loan rates are creeping up and are terrified. And, and they're saying things like loan rates are doing the job. We don't need to raise rates. Hello, everyone. Today, famous financial analyst Dave Weisberger talks about the latest Bitcoin pump, the impact of the forthcoming ETF, the overall market situation, and Q4 expectations all packed in this discussion. If you're as excited about exploring the fascinating world of cryptocurrencies as we are, hit that subscribe button now. Don't miss out on our insightful discussions, market updates, and game-changing insights that could potentially shape your financial future. Remember to give us a thumbs up if you find our content valuable. Your support fuels our passion to keep delivering top-notch videos. And hey, why not spread the knowledge? Share our videos with your crypto-curious friends, family, and fellow enthusiasts. The simple fact is, what, what we all experienced last Monday, which was enormously fun, uh, <laughs> is as clear a proof as I have ever seen in my entire life that it's not priced in. And you, you don't have to ask. You, you, know, you don't have to question. You don't have to whatever. I mean, it would have been 35000 uh in within an hour if that news was verified now the reality is that news was idiotic uh which i said at the time it was like blackrock won't be first i mean because you know gbdc at the court case blah 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 they're gonna do whatever they're gonna do they're gonna do a bunch together it's very very clear that that's true uh anything else and you know some political donor will be very very angry and they don't want that to happen. And, you know, with all due respect to Bitwise and Kathy Wood, uh, I mean, I think that they will get included, They're the ones who have, have, have played ball with the SEC, but there's no way they're going to prioritize BlackRock over Fidelity or vice versa. Uh, it's just that's, that's not the way Washington works. So I, I don't see that that happening. But the, the thing that's really important, what James was trying to get at is, and what Mike was getting at, are a couple of very important points. Very important point number one uh, was institutions. Mike James said it perfectly. I have nothing to add there. It is absolutely true. And that is, you know, some very large number of trillions of dollars of assets that yeah, a very small percentage will start migrating into Bitcoin. But Bitcoin on the margin is a half a trillion dollar asset of which less than 20 percent uh, is acting like free float. So you're talking about a hundred billion dollar asset. So it doesn't take much uh, to start pushing it up on the margin. And that's why people like Mark Yusko make the statement that by his math, the institutional adoption alone at half a percent to one percent across the institutional portfolios that are legitimately 60, 40 type, you know, asset allocators is easily enough to bring Bitcoin. And it won't happen overnight to 150. But there's a couple of other things people need to understand. Thing to understand, number one. Bitcoin's adoption is hamstrung by the greed of all the crypto bros in the space. I'm going to say that again because I, I want that to get quoted. Bitcoin's adoption is being hamstrung by the greed of the Bitcoin maxis who claim to be holier than thou in the space because right now retail will be able to buy an ETF for zero commission at a spread that is somewhere less than five basis points. And if you try to buy Bitcoin in your own portfolio and pay whatever you're gonna pay a, a custodian to hold it, which is gonna be more than you're gonna pay the management fee to BlackRock or Fidelity, or it, you know, if assuming you wanna have, you know, you wanna have estate planning for everyone around you, uh, unless you happen to have very technologically oriented spouses uh, then you're going to pay something. But even if you didn't, the numbers are small. But the average retail commission or spread to buy Bitcoin from all these crypto bro platforms starts at just under 1%. So what I'm talking about is a 95% discount for trading and investing in Bitcoin in your portfolios, which is something nobody talks about, but I don't know why. I mean, everyone talks about the fact that retail brokerage platforms, which make up multiple trillions of dollars, are now be allowed to trade it. And that's important. But it's also important to know that if people who buy and sell on Swan Bitcoin or Abra or God forbid Coinbase, you know, in, in their, their pure retail platform, will get a 90 to 95 percent discount if they decide to use their brokerage account again instead. 
That is a very big number. And even if the management fee is 30, 40 basis points, it probably that's what it is. Think about it. You'd have to hold it for three years to break even, even against self-custody. And, you know, it, it, that is a big deal. So Bitcoin adoption is going to get a massive boost. Now, it doesn't happen day one, but it happens. And anyone who ignores economics, and James is going to laugh, right? yeah, our current government is going to find this out very quickly if they haven't already. When you ignore basic supply and demand economics, you're on the wrong side of history. Full stop. And understanding a 90 to 95% discount is going to occur for the entire U.S. investment market is something we can't ignore. And I think that's why the inevitability of its approval is getting traders positioning. Everybody who traded last Monday figured out that shorting Bitcoin right now is like picking up pennies in front of a steamroller. Yeah. And so the amount of people willing to short it are negligible. Well, what happens when you take the short side out of the equation? Well, guess what? We're now above the price that it was trading when we were talking last Monday. And that's why. It's not for any specific reason. It's that people said, oh, God, it's too expensive to short this. And the whole speculative world, as you know, was speculating short. So that's what's going on here. It will fade, you know, when buying it, you know, says, wait a minute, we've gone too far unless we get, you know, unless something happens on the macro side, et cetera. But that's what's going on. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, it's very, it, there are a couple of points I want to get back to on, on as far as all coins are concerned. Don't underestimate the importance of two news stories that came out last week. News story number one was Mr. Fink, who specifically talks about big, I mean, he, I mean, I didn't write his speech for him, but I could have given it right. He looks at Bitcoin as a monetary instrument. And we're going to get back to that because I want to talk about the demonetization of gold in a heartbeat. But he also specifically looks at crypto as an asset class as one that's very important. Now, consider what that means, because the other story that came out last week is people are starting to file for e for Ethereum spot ETFs. How long is it before BlackRock and others start creating an index of high of, of high profile yeah. altcoins yeah. And, and then apply for an ETF based off of that? And so, you know, look, it, it, we're talking about if we had a different administration, that would happen within weeks, maybe months, but probably weeks. You know, if there were, if 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 if, if Commissioner Purse were the, the SEC commissioner, we'd have it already. But think about that. And index inclusion is a big deal. And so, who knows what will be there now? Why is Chainlink ripping? Chainlink's ripping because people are saying that DeFi will need an oracle, and all these things will happen. Why is Solana ripping? Solana's ripping because. They didn't die when SPF died, and there's technology there. I mean, seriously. I mean, it's, 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 it's as simple as that. It's like you know, people watch the K, watch the the thing, you know, watch the trial, and they're saying, "Wait a minute, this thing's not dying." Well, okay, look, there's some actual statistics there, and so people go crazy. Why is Matic rising? Well, there's use cases in DeFi, etc. And you go up and down the line. You know, Filecoin. You know, Arthur Hayes. You know, uh, you know, talks about Filecoin and how important that will be for for AI. I mean, look, it's early, but people forget that stocks are, were early, too, in 1998 when the Internet bubble started. You know, every one of these sea changes, people are early. It, you need to understand that. Now, is this a formation? Is this the basis for a sustainable rally in all coins? Absolutely not. But if Bitcoin does rip, will it happen? Maybe. Do I want to be short these things? Are you out of your mind? Well, I think if Bitcoin chills here between 30 and 31 for a while, yeah, which will be the most will well. scenario, then we'll have this sort of temporary moment, right? But, but, but I agree with you. Bitcoin has to do a lot more for us to see. But a I want to get back to the two other themes. Theme number one is demonetization. I don't believe Bitcoin's going to demonetize gold overnight. I do believe it's inevitable. I think it's as inevitable it was that gold demonetized silver because the gold silver ratio went went from 15 in the Earth's, which is where it is in the Earth's crust. And as silver, as prices started to rally with uh, various central banks and all sorts of things going on with gold, as prices started to rally and demand for it happened, then guess what? Uh, silver was too damn heavy to use uh, for transactions, 
right? And gold was much more portable and it demonetized silver. It's as simple as that. It was much more convenient to use gold and silver. You know, we can talk about bimetallism, you go back to the history, it doesn't matter. The fact is gold effectively demonetized silver, not completely, but partially. Is Bitcoin going to demonetize gold? Talk to me when Bitcoin is approaching three or 400,000. Until yeah. then, this is squiggles on the chart. This is not that. Michael, Mike may be right, but if he is right, then, you know, then maybe Mike Alfred is calling for one of the all time great God candles will turn out to be correct. <laughs> but I don't believe this is it yet. Uh, That's I fair. think that people get crazy about that. Now, as far as the economy goes, going back to macro, I mean, it's too bad. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's kind of important. I, I look at this and it's it's interesting, but the real economy isn't, is just not cooperating. Um, it's just not cooperating uh, with, 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 you know, with, with what's going on. You know, it, it, I'm just going to show, you know, whoops, Chrome tab. Yeah. You mean it's not cooperating with the, with uh, rising rates? No, it's not cooperating. I mean, so this is a zoom out of the Baltic dry index. We all know what I care about, but look, yeah. look at it. Um, where are we? Uh, right. You know, it, so it, obviously, if you go back, you know, forever, it's right at the top of its normal range other than crazy economic breakouts. But notice I'm saying top of the normal range. I mean, you can see it. And when you go look over the last year, you know, that was the, you know, from since the rate rises, it's... Uh, <laughs> You know, it, it's it's not looking bad. And this is shipping of real goods. And when you see this up here and not down here, that is not what a Black Monday is made from. Right. It just isn't. And there's lots of other indicators. But, you know, it, it's it, the point is, is I, I know that, that I, I used to look at this a lot. I always look at this a lot. You know, the fact is we had an employment report. Uh, you know, you could argue that there a lot of it was part time, whatever. At the end of the day, it doesn't look incredibly weak. The Fed's job hasn't been done for it. And now we're sitting in, 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 in a situation on the macro side, which I really want Mike to talk about. Someone who I think I thought was was really at his pulse on it uh, was going on about how the Fed wants higher long rates, which I think is absolutely completely wrong. If but they want to really, die. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I think they don't. But I think the Fed is looking at the fact that long rates are creeping up and are terrified. And, and they're saying things like long rates are doing the job. We don't need to raise rates. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Dave Weisberger. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.